This video will provide a short overview of the forms and procedures for appealing an eviction judgment to the Minnesota Court of Appeals. Throughout this video, we will be referring to the Minnesota Rules of Civil Appellate Procedure. You can find the rules online at the website on the screen or in the video description. Appealing a case on your own can be challenging. The Minnesota State Law Library has prepared a guide of appellate resources to help you with the process. You can find this guide at the website on the screen or in the video description. The State Law Library also offers an appeals self-help clinic on the third Thursday of each month where you can talk to a lawyer about your appeal. You can find more information about this clinic at the website on the screen or in the video description. The Minnesota Court of Appeals publishes a forms packet, Filing an Eviction Appeal at the Minnesota Court of Appeals. This forms packet is available on the court's website and on the State Law Library Appeals Guide. This packet includes detailed instructions with information about your appeal, as well as the forms you need to get started. The forms are Notice of Appeal, Statement of the Case, Certificate of Service, Certificate of Filing of Appeal in the District Court. You will also need to file a copy of the judgment you are appealing. If you do not have a copy of the decision you want to appeal, you can look up your case using Minnesota Court Records online or by visiting a court records terminal at the courthouse. Before we look at these forms, there are a few things you should be aware of. Once your appeal is decided, the Court of Appeals will issue a written decision known as an opinion. The opinion includes the facts of your case and the reasons for the judge's decision. Opinions issued by the Court of Appeals are public records and will be available on the Minnesota Judicial Branch's website, so people may be able to find the opinion and see the reasons you were evicted. Eviction cases have a very short deadline to appeal. You have 15 days from the date that the District Court Administrator entered a judgment on the eviction order to file and serve your appeal. This appeal period starts to run when the court enters the judgment, regardless of whether you are notified of the judgment on that date. It is important to figure out your deadline as soon as possible because Rule 126 says the court can't extend your deadline to appeal. If you do not file and serve your appeal before your deadline, the court will dismiss your appeal. If you aren't sure what your deadline is, you should talk to a lawyer. We will now look at each form individually. It would be helpful if you have a copy of the judgment you are appealing and copies of the forms to look at as we review each one. The Notice of Appeal is a short form that tells the court you want to appeal a case. Let's begin with the caption. At the top left, fill in the county where your case was decided. At the top right, add the judicial district. The county and judicial district should be printed at the top of the judgment you want to appeal. Moving down to the case title, fill in the blanks for plaintiff and defendant the same way they appear on the judgment. These might also be labeled as petitioner and respondent instead. Moving to the right, fill in the district court case number. This number should be on the first page of the judgment. Below the district court case number, write the date the eviction judgment was entered. You can find this date either at the end of the order entering judgment or you may have received a separate notice of entry of judgment with the date on it. Moving down the page, you will need to fill in information below the Clerk of Appellate Court's address. If you were the plaintiff in the District Court, check the box for plaintiff. If you were the defendant, check the box for defendant. Continuing down the page, fill in your name, address, and telephone number in the corresponding blanks. This is how the court will contact you during your appeal. Finally, be sure to sign and date the form. The statement of the case is the longest document you will need to start your appeal. There are detailed instructions for filling out this form, which are available on the court's website or the State Law Library's Appeals Guide. You will want to refer to these instructions as you write your statement of the case. Let's start at the top. Once again, Fill in the caption just like you did on the Notice of Appeal. You will not get a Court of Appeals case number until you file your documents, so you can leave that blank for now. For Question 1, 
fill in the county where your case was decided. On the second blank, write the name of the judge in your case. If you don't remember the judge's name, check the judgment you are appealing. The name will usually appear on the first page, and the judge will sign the judgment on the last page as well. Some parts of question two have already been filled in for you. Question 2a has been completed, so you can skip over that. For question 2b, write the date that judgment was entered. Question 2c has also been answered, so you can skip it. Questions 2d, 2e, and 2f will only apply if you have filed a motion in the district court that tolls, or temporarily extends, your deadline to appeal. You can find additional details about this question on page 2 of the instructions, and if you aren't sure whether this applies to you, you should ask a lawyer. Question 3a has also been answered for you. In question 3b, list any statutes that apply to your appeal. The judge may have cited to statutes in the judgment you are appealing, so you may want to start there. Question 4 asks you to give a brief description of the issues that were raised in district court. In other words, you should tell the court in a sentence or two what you argued in trial court and how those issues were decided by the judge in your case. Question 5 asks you to give a short description of the issues you want to raise in this appeal. For questions 4 and 5, remember that these should be short answers. You only need one or two sentences here. You will have a chance to make a detailed argument later when you file your brief. Question 6 asks you to list any related appeals. For most people, there won't be any. If that is the case, write none. If you have other related appeals, list the file number and party names. If you aren't sure whether question 6 applies to you, you can find a detailed explanation on page 4 of the Statement of the Case instructions. Question 7 asks about the record of your case. The Court of Appeals does not review new information in an appeal, but they are able to review documents filed in the district court and testimony given at a hearing or trial. Generally, if you want the Court of Appeals to consider anything that was said at a hearing or trial before the district court, you will need to order a transcript. If you are ordering a transcript, check yes for question 7a. In question 7b, Choose whether you want a full transcript or a partial transcript. A partial transcript only includes what was said during part of the hearing with the district court judge or housing court referee, whereas a full transcript includes everything. Question 7c asks if you have already filed a transcript with the court. If you have, check yes. If not, check no. If you answered no, indicate whether you have ordered the transcript from the court reporter in question 7d. If you are requesting a transcript, you can skip questions 7e and 7f. Question 8 asks about oral arguments. If you are representing yourself in your appeal, you will submit your arguments to the court in writing and there will not be an oral argument. The other party will not have an oral argument either. If you are representing yourself in your appeal, you can check I do not have an attorney for question 8a Question 9 asks about the appellate brief. The appellate brief is your written argument to the court. Most people who are representing themselves choose to complete an informal brief. You can find more information about appellate briefs in our informal appellate briefs video. Question 10 asks for contact information for you and the other party or their lawyer if they have one. Remember to fill out your contact information and sign this form once you have completed all of your forms, your next steps are to file and serve your appeal. You will file your original documents with the Clerk of Appellate Courts, but you also need to serve the other parties in the case and give a copy to the District Court. Here's what you will need. You should make three copies of the Notice of Appeal, two copies of the Statement of the Case, and two copies of the Judgment you are appealing. If there is more than one other party in your case, you will need to make an additional copy of each document for each party. Separate the originals into one pile. You will file the originals with the Clerk of Appellate Courts, along with a copy of the judgment you are appealing. Separate the other documents into sets, with one copy each of the Notice of Appeal, 
statement of the case, and the judgment you are appealing. You will have one extra copy of the Notice of Appeal. One set of these documents is for the other party in the case. If there is more than one other party, you will have an additional set for each party. One set of the documents is for you to keep for your own records. The extra copy of the Notice of Appeal is for you to file with the District Court. Now that you have completed your copies, you are ready to file and serve your appeal. You must file and serve your appeal before your deadline for it to be considered. You have three options for filing your appeal with the Clerk of Appellate Courts. By hand delivering the documents in person, by mail, or by e-filing. Most people representing themselves file in person or by mail. Choose the method that works best for you. To file your documents in person, bring them to the Clerk of Appellate Court's office in the Minnesota Judicial Center in St. Paul during normal business hours. To file your documents by mail, send them addressed to the Clerk of Appellate Courts with correct postage. Your appeal will be considered timely if you mail it by your deadline with the correct address and correct postage, even though it won't arrive on that date. You also need to serve the other parties by your deadline or your appeal will be considered late. Service is simply making sure the other parties in the case receive a copy of whatever you file with the court. The most common way people representing themselves serve documents is by mail. Serving documents by mail means that you'd mail them to the correct address with the correct postage. You will need to serve the other party in the case with the notice of appeal, statement of the case, and a copy of the judgment you are appealing. You will need to give the Court of Appeals proof you did this by filing the Certificate of Service with the Court. The Eviction Appeal Packet contains several different Certificates of Service. For now, you can set aside the Appellant's Certificate of Service by Mail of Brief and Appellant's Certificate of Service by Personal Delivery of Brief. You will not need these forms until you file your brief later on, so keep these somewhere safe until then. Right now, we will look at the Appellant's Certificate of Service by Mail of Notice of Appeal, Statement of the Case, and Judgment. There is also a version of this form for personal service. You will only need to fill out one of these forms, depending on how you decide to serve your documents. For purposes of this video, we will use the Certificate of Service by Mail. For the Certificate of Service, fill in your name on the blank where it says Appellant. Fill in the other party's name on the respondent line. If you have a Court of Appeals case number already, you can add it here. Whoever physically mails the documents will complete the rest of the form. You can serve your own documents, but if someone else mails them for you, they should complete this form instead. Fill in the county, your name, and the date you mailed the documents. The documents you are mailing are listed in this form so this is a good time to double check that you have included everything. Next, fill in the address for the other party or their lawyer if they have one. At the bottom of this form, you will see a signature block. You should only sign this form once the documents have actually been placed in the mail. Then write your signature, the date, the county, and the state on the appropriate lines, or if you had someone else serve your papers, have them fill out this information. Next, let's look at the final certificate included in the forms packet, Appellant's Certificate of Filing of Appeal in the District Court. To start your appeal, you must file a copy of the Notice of Appeal with the District Court that heard your case. You will use this form to show the Court of Appeals that you gave a copy of the Notice of Appeal to the District Court. You will complete the top of this form just like you did for the Certificate of Service. You will need to include the county in the blank provided and then choose one of the options. If you decide to mail your Notice of Appeal to the District Court, you will need to write the address on the lines provided. Once you have mailed or otherwise filed the Notice of Appeal, you will complete the signature block just like you did for the Certificate of Service. Once you have completed service and filled out these two forms, you will file them with the Clerk of Appellate Courts using one of the methods listed earlier. You have now filed your appeal. However, you should be aware that filing an appeal does not automatically stop the eviction judgment from taking effect. 
This means you can be removed from your house or apartment, even if you are in the middle of appealing your eviction. If you want to remain in your home while the eviction appeal is being decided, you will need to file a motion in the district court to stay or stop the landlord from making you move out. The timeline to enforce an eviction judgment moves very quickly, and the sheriff may remove you from your home before your 15 days to appeal are up. If you want to stay, you will need to file your motion with the district court as soon as possible. The court does not publish forms to stop the landlord from making you move out. If you want to stay in your home during your appeal, you should talk to a lawyer as soon as possible. You can also contact the Minnesota State Law Library for additional help finding forms and examples. Your next step is to request the transcript, if you have not done so already. You should contact the judge's court reporter to start the process. If you are not sure who the court reporter was, you can contact court administration in the county where the hearing took place. You will need to work with the court reporter to complete a transcript certificate. The form and detailed instructions for requesting the transcript are available on our appeals guide. Once the court reporter files the transcript, the clock starts running on your time to write your appellate brief. You can find information on appellate briefs by visiting our appeals guide and by watching the video, Informal Appellate Briefs. Thank you for watching this video. Remember, you can always contact the Minnesota State Law Library with questions by emailing askalibrarian at courts dot state dot mn dot us or by phone at six five one two nine seven seven six five one